good morning. No road here at Stealth Camp. It is 5.20 in the morning. And I just got the idea to fill my wake up. Just so people can, you know, see how peaceful it is. And this is really what I like about my camping rather than an apartment. But there is my instant coffee in a repurposed um, peanut container. I use a shake peanut container that I repurposed into a shaker. And I like instant coffee, Folgers instant coffee. It's the only thing that wakes me up. And I make it very strong, like five tablespoons. I don't heat it. I just, you know, actually make it the night before it sits in my shaker and then I uh, wake up and start my morning. Something I would like to actually get over. It's like one of the last addictions. It, I think it is the last addiction. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't, I do occasionally drink, but I would like to get over that. Um, I don't drink heavy or nothing, but you know, occasionally, like three or four times a year, I'll probably kick back and have a, you know, drink a night. Which I don't think it'll do me any good anymore. I don't do any drugs. I'm not saying that I wouldn't ever, ever, ever smoke a little bit of pot, but that is once a year or something like that. Occasionally, if it felt right, it's a, if somebody, if I found some or somebody said, hey, do you want a puff? Oh, okay, you know. Maybe, but I never, ever, ever go out and look for it, buy it, or any of that. So I live a very clean life. My life is very focused on my, uh, sort of like a monkish kind of life, but I just have a little less structure than they do. I like, I really respect the structures of like monks and stuff. I would like to get a little more structure in my life. Like, I do this in the morning, do that in the morning, and here's my routine. I do have a general routine. A lot of it is focusing on my gratitude. I'm very, very careful to be very thankful for every bone that works. And for, you know, the function of my digestion. And from heel to crown, I kind of go over and really focus my attention on gratitude. And then I focus on... Uh, my mortality, and there's times where I kind of romanticize the moment of death, like what's it going to be like, I kind of can't wait, but then I'm a little bit exasperated, or then I'm a little bit, um, I should say, um, a little afraid, mm -hmm. and I want to really focus on making me the best version of myself that I can be so I can have a more peaceful death so I don't have any regrets and I'll go back over things that I, you know, would change and work on, you know, uh, repentance and change. As I'm drinking my coffee, after, you know, restroom, I generally walk and I talk to God for Sometimes it lasts a little while. But anyways, just hear the birds and the peace. It's so very light, light about the rain. We need so much more. <laughs> and this is my morning. That road is more than a, 
a little over a half a mile away. It's surprising that those wheels are, you know, the tires on cars are so loud. Something that I have a major problem with is noise. Noise of neighbors, the thumping and bumping. Even if it's reasonable and unintentional, if it's just completely regular, if it's part of the personality and I have a neighbor, you can just hear the way they thump. If they put their heel into the uh, floor when they walk, when they go up the stairs, kind of loud and inconsiderate. When they, if there's like have kind of a squeak and a little clunk, clunk when the door closes, even if they do it kind of quiet, if I can hear it, it just really drives me nuts. I am really, really thoughtful about other people when I go up and down stairs and I open and close doors and I open and close drawers. Um, I, and I just expect other people to be the same and they just are not. And I haven't met anyone yet who is as thoughtful as me. I will say it's probably the good one good thing that I got from my parents that I, I, I would say my favorite thing is the thoughtfulness for others. I think my parents had a natural instinct for that. My, um, you know, sometimes I, you know, could look back and see like, you know, things could have been a lot different if my parents were a little different. So. But, those, so, you know, you know, I wasn't exactly a fan of everything that they did, you know, when I look back over, you know. But that was one thing that I picked up that was really good. I really remember many times where it was kind of instilled. Sometimes it was by just their behavior. And sometimes it was instilled directly, you know, this is, you know, make sure you're thinking of other people when you're making when you're walking or when you're closing doors, be quiet. Other people you know, can hear that. I remember that. It's probably the best thing I ever got from my parents and my thoughtfulness to others. For strangers, you know, people you don't know. Neighbors, you know, if you live in an apartment. We didn't live in an apartment, but... I remember being instilled with thoughtfulness for others. And it's just a shock how thoughtless people are, neighbors in the apartments. The noise is unbelievable. It's quiet noise, it drives me nuts, but when they really go at it, it's... You might as well just take a gun and just, you know, fire it right next to my head, you know? And that's how opening and closing of doors and stomping and bumping and bumping and dogs barking you know, and if the walls are thin, even if it's just what you would call um, reasonable noise, I I just get furious, you know, listening to somebody's little daily routine of talking to somebody on the phone. You know, if I can hear a voice that's just kind of, ooh, good for you, good you, good for you, good for you, good for you, you know, over, you know, through the wall. Um, the drive you nuts. I mean, I would rather just die, you know, than to live in an apartment that has those noises. I just, people have no idea how sensitive I am to noise. Um, I can hear everything, everything, and I just, I'll focus on it. What is that noise? And it'll drive me nuts until I can finally find it. it um, there was like an interesting book by Kafka, who was a German writer, and he was really detailed about quirks and stuff that people have, and, and um, it was called The Burrow, and that is like literal, it, it, it's this, I guess this creature that created a burrow, and then there's this one noise I couldn't figure out what it was and the whole book was about this thing going cuckoo over the noise and that's me <laughs> like 
Like, I can't stand four-wheelers. I think there should be laws against barking dogs. I think there should be laws against, you know, loud engines. I think there should be laws against jake brakes on, you know, big trucks. They don't have to be as loud as they are. Everything can be softened, and people can take a lot more thought towards their neighbors than they do. I just feel this, feel this. There's no neighbors... There's none of that loud noise. The only thing I hate about this is, you know, the potential for legal issues, you know, because I'm under the under the radar and I'm stealth camping. But I'm not harming anything here. Am I hurting anybody? Am I taking drugs here? Am I like a real bad guy who's running from the law or something? No. Am I raising anybody's taxes? Am I hurting anybody? This is just me living my life the only way that I can do it get an apartment. Give me a break. Compared to this, the only issue that really kind of sucks is the legal issue. You know, the potential for legal problems. I mean, I've been here at this spot for like more than, I think, six weeks now. Well, anyways... No road at camp. I hope that didn't sound too crazy, but this is why I, I'm just not ready to put myself into an apartment like a loaf of bread into a box and deal with neighbors and then sit here and pay for it. I mean, that's even worse. I mean, you, you can sit there and what, spend... 650 or 500 on the apartment or 475 it's real cheap and then you got to deal with the neighbors of course and then you got to uh, um, then you got your bills on top of that usually unless you get something that's all included it's just it's just I can't deal with it it's, I'd rather just you know whatever money I get just hand them out to live it live like this and much more happier. I just wish I had a little bit more people to relate to, and uh, I wish I lived in a more thoughtful world. It would be easy if people were more on a spiritual plane, you know, on a spiritual playing field, and think, you know, and if there was, you know, less uh, ugly in the, in, 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 with people backstabbing and drama and narcissism and gaslighting and none of that out here the only thing i have is just a fear of you know somebody finding my place while i'm gone and they destroy it or call the police and i have a legal issue you know because i'm under the radar camping and that's the only issue but you know if i you know i could just pull you know like travel light and just kind of travel a lot and as long as I don't get hurt you know if I have a body that'll transport my backpack I can just live constantly moving and and there's generally no legal issues when you do that it's when you stay for a long period of time but yeah I don't trash the place I go into town almost every day take my garbage with me and, you know and as long as I have a time to pack up and go because I got cardboard underneath me I'm gonna have to take that cardboard and put it in the dumpster somewhere I've got a couple of things that need to kind of go to a dumpster but you know I won't leave uh anything here you know this place will, is, will be blessed as far as I'm concerned it housed somebody who is you know kind of precious to God at least I certainly hope I have a precious relationship I know that much with God and one of the reasons I'm able to sustain that and to grow in that is because I am way out here. Hear that? Hmm? Soak that in. A little road over and out.